What's going on guys, Bob Roach from RoachTechnology.com here with a quick overview of iOS 6. This is in fact the first developer's preview, and if you go ahead and check uh, about a video or so back on my channel, click it uh, right here, that is actually me testing out the new navigation, the turn-by-turn -turn navigation found in the new Maps application. So a lot of people seem to like that video, so hopefully a lot of you guys will like this video too. Now I will say that because this is the first beta, a lot of this stuff isn't final, there probably will be some new tweaks added to this, and I probably will not be doing a different video for every single release of the iOS iOS beta so um, but a lot of the core features that they touted are here so I'm just gonna go ahead and get right into it the first thing I'm gonna go ahead and talk about is settings so I'm gonna go ahead and tilt this guy up here and I'm gonna go ahead and tap settings and coming out of here the first thing you'll notice is do not disturb now you can turn that on or off pretty self-explanatory but to actually customize it you have to go into notifications do not disturb and now you can actually schedule it. As you can see right now, mine's set to start at midnight and then stop at 8. So between those hours, I won't get any notifications, my screen won't light up, etc, etc. Now one thing is you can't customize the date. So, I mean, now that summer's here, I'm up past midnight pretty much every single night. Uh, that's just way too early for me to be going to bed at midnight, or at midnight during the summer. But um, once school starts, I may only want this during weekdays. As, at this point, there is no way to customize that. It's either on or off and at those times. I don't believe there's like days of the week that you can actually customize that for. So hopefully they'll add that. But you can allow calls. Right now it's just from my favorites. And I did allow that repeated call where if someone calls the first time, nothing happens. But if it's like an emergency and someone calls you right back, that call will go through. So that's pretty uh, nice that Apple thought of things like that. But other than that, Notification Center looks pretty much the same. And the second main feature is scrolling down here. As you can see with Twitter, we now have Facebook. Now I'm currently not logged in simply because when you log in, this will like unify all your contacts and everything like that. May there might be a way to customize this. I actually haven't even looked. I barely ever use Facebook, so I'm really not too psyched about this feature. But um, a lot of you guys probably are. So as you guys do, I have Facebook installed, but my settings aren't in there, and so I'll, I'm going to go ahead and hold off on that. But it's very much the same as Twitter. You simply sign in, and then you're good to go. Everything will just start syncing, and that'll be OS wide. So that's pretty much all there is in settings. There are a few subtle changes, uh, like like such as this, uh, brightness and wallpaper are now combined. I believe they were separate before, but you know, just little things like that. There's really no new features though. So moving on, now we have notification center. So coming down to notification center, just like so, you'll see that now we have a tap to tweet compose thing. Now if I was signed into Facebook in my settings, I could actually post to Facebook right from here too. But this works just the way you think. If I want to tweet, opens up a nice tweet thing. And for some reason, I can't seem to dictate here. Dictate is in iOS, obviously, but for some reason, in this window, you cannot dictate, which is very, very interesting. It's probably just a little bug, but that's something I actually just noticed. But anyway, you know, works like you think. I'm obviously not going to send that tweet, but you guys get the idea. Pretty self-explanatory. However, I find myself using apps like TweetBot a lot more, so I don't know how often I'll use that, but maybe if I just want, you know, quick access or something, that could be a nice way to go about it. But overall, like you saw, the UI is pretty much the same. It's the same, you know, pull down from the top. Everything else looks basically identical. You still have those stupid X's that I hate that you have to, you know, it's like you tap it and then it doesn't want to go. So you have to tap it like four times before it'll actually dismiss that notification. But um, nothing too huge of a deal, but I wish they would update that, especially on the iPad. Next up is Passbook. This actually is not very functional yet because, you know, there's no, like, I think the, the APIs are out there, but uh, app developers still have yet to really take advantage of it, so that's pretty much all you'll see. I mean, you can't really do anything. So until, like, you buy some tickets that, that uh, integrate with this and, you know, things like that, this really won't do much for you, but this is going to be a very cool feature. I think maybe, like, in iOS 7, they're just going to, like, unify your Apple ID with your Passbook, and then you can start using, like, your, your credit card as part of Passbook. I, th I just think that'd be the coolest thing, and who knows, it could be coming sooner than we think. Next up is turn-by-turn -turn navigation. Like I said, I did a full dedicated video on this, but... And now, for example, let's say I want to go to uh, Apple headquarters. So we're going to go ahead and type in 1, Infinite Loops, Cupertino, California. Go ahead and type that in. Okay, now we're going to bring up this little menu here, and we're going to go to Satellite View. And now that we're, you know, here... Now what we can actually do is activate the 3D, so we'll go ahead and do that. And then here we go, it is still loading, I am doing this all over 3G, so it probably will not be the fastest thing in the world. But I can take, you know, two fingers and then pan around like that, I can zoom in, zoom out. I think if you take like two fingers and go, I, I forget exactly how to do it. 
But yeah, this definitely is not ready yet. Uh, I believe like a lot of the servers probably aren't even active, which is probably why it's so slow. And a lot of the renderings aren't quite true. Like for example, you'll see a lot of buildings look like they're caving in, things like that. Obviously, you know, they're not too fast performance here, but I'm sure this will definitely get better over time. And this uh, 3D, like the sky view thing, it only works in some cities. Uh, my city, for example, I live uh, in Pennsylvania, so pretty much like all of Pennsylvania is not ready for this yet. So it's really only like major cities and things. But for example, if I wanted to say get in the car and go here, which would be a very nice fun trip, go ahead and tap that. And you can see it's it's chugging along. It's it's trying. It hates me right now, but what can you what can I say? So as you can see, it kind of zoomed out into like give you a nice three D like globe look, so which is pretty cool. As you see, it gives me two different routes. This route requires a toll. I would imagine both of them do. But I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start that. Starting route to Apple Inc. All right, so you get the idea. It tells you like you know your ETA and all that other stuff. So there you go, there's maps. I have a much like, uh, in-depth, actually, in-action video. Go ahead and check that out on my channel. All right, next up is Siri, so let's go ahead and get her warmed up for camera. How are you today? Very well, thank you. Awesome. So now with Siri, they've added a bunch of new things, such as, you know, sports. How much taller is LeBron than Kobe? That's the only example they use in the Apple Keynote. So there you go, it brings up all his stats. And there you go. Now, I'm really not much of a sports fan, so this doesn't interest me that much, but uh, trust me, I know a lot of you guys are really into sports. So now let's go ahead and try something else, uh, maybe football. I'm just going to pull a random team out of the hat here because really I don't root for any team other than the Steelers. I live in Pennsylvania, and I hate the Steelers, so you can probably, I'm probably going to get a bunch of dislikes for this video just because I said that but the truth had to be told. So let's just go ahead and ask, uh, when is the next Patriots game? The Patriots, Saints game is August 9th, 2012, 7.30 p.m. And there you go, a bunch of useful information about sports, tons of schedules, different teams, different sports, everything like that. It's all here, which is pretty nice. Now let's say, for example, uh, what's playing at the movies? There you go, so now it shows all the movies. Now if I want an actor, like say, look for stuff about an actor, I could say, find me movies with Will Smith. I found several movies starring Will Smith. There you go, there's the new Man in Black 3, uh, Seven Pounds, Hancock, you know, a bunch of his favorites. So there you go, Siri is a glorified movie buff. So there you go, tons of information about many different things there. But what I like most about Siri is that it can finally launch applications. That is something that I've been wanting for a very long time. That's finally here. So let's go ahead and we'll launch, uh, launch TweetBot. Best Twitter application for iOS in my opinion. But there you go, pulls it up pretty quick. So if you have tons of applications and you don't want to search, you don't want to scroll through tons of apps, then Siri is here for you. So here we go, just going all the way up to the top. Here's my at replies, shout out to you guys. Pretty sweet, so shout out to you if you saw your name there. But anyway, that's launching apps on Siri. Definitely a very useful feature that I'll probably use every day. Moving up next is Safari. Now Safari doesn't have many, but there are indeed you know a few nice little tweaks. The first one is iCloud tabs, which actually I find very useful. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap like you know a little history and bookmark things. You'll see we actually now have iCloud tabs here, and this will tell me what's open on you know my iPad. And I don't know why it says my iPhone because this is my iPhone. I don't know why that's there, and plus that's not even pulled up on this. So there's definitely still some bugs to work out. But as you see on my iPad, I have uh, YouTube loaded up. On um, this is localhost. This is my computer right over you know there. Um, David Franco's first taste of the five hour energy, the extreme berry one, pretty funny stuff. Go ahead and check that out. And uh, go inside Gotham City, that's you know the new Mountain Dew flavor, so it's pretty cool. But as you can see, iCloud tabs works pretty good, so if I wanted to pull up something that's on another machine, as long as it's on the same Apple ID, it should be right here. So the next thing I want to show you guys is you know the new share menu. And this is OS wide by the way. If I share if I go to the share menu like in a, in the photos app or anything else, it will actually bring up the same menu, which does look very nice. If you rotate it uh, to landscape, if it wants to be my friend here. Oh, I, don't, I, don't, I actually don't think that would rotate because it's like, you know, a mobile page. But anyway, if it was in landscape, then I believe, uh, oh, here we go. 
but so we'll go ahead and we'll go to that share menu as you can see now we can actually scroll through it so it does look pretty nice and who knows maybe they'll have some more uh, little options here over time but it does look pretty nice and it's a definitely you know a nice UI feature of the new OS so we'll go ahead and cancel out of that and there you go I don't really need to share Google pretty pretty sure everybody knows about it but well actually I'll go back to landscape and another nice feature is that you know this little full screen thing here now this won't save too much space on a screen that's only this big but it does look pretty sweet and that only appears uh, I believe when you go to the top but as you see going down uh, it's not there so it's a pretty nice feature and you can see this little back button so if like we wanted to go back then it's as simple as hitting that you don't have to like bring up the interface first so not too many tweaks in Safari but a few nice little UI things that could definitely come in handy and the last thing I really have for you guys is just some updated UI tweaks throughout the OS for example if we open up the camera app you can see now it has like, you know, a black sort of a bezel to it which is pretty cool I mean it does look different but it's you know it's nothing that's gonna boost functionality it's just you know a nice little UI tweak something different Moving on to the weather app, they have now a whole new font and some new you know graphics up here. This, I gotta say, does look nicer. It makes the app pop a little bit more. Um, I do like their choice of font here as well. It's different than before. Uh, just little things like not everybody will appreciate, but things like that I do, and a lot of people do. But I'm not gonna go through all of them. I mean, there's different like little ones sprinkled in throughout the OS. But other than that, that's really all that iOS 6 brings. At least at this point in time, uh, like I said, there will be more developer previews and new things getting new functionality, but I will not be covering all those simply because it'll be a lot of redundant information. And oh, by the way, I did have this installed on my iPad, but for some reason my Wi-Fi just stopped working. Like this would connect to my Wi-Fi perfectly and the iPad wouldn't, even though I tried like resetting all my settings. I even tried restoring, and for some reason iOS 6 just would not like my iPad's Wi-Fi, so I did have to restore that back to iOS 5. But this is, as you saw, running iOS 6, so I would have showed you things like Siri on the iPad, but I guess I wasn't meant to show you guys that. So there's other YouTube videos for that. But like I said, thank you guys very much for watching. I'm at CPUK on Twitter. Also, be sure to check out RoachTechnology.com and at RoachTechnology on Twitter. And I'll see you guys very soon.